Hello everyone and welcome to BISP Solutions. I am CS Anjana Mishra, working as the Lead Functional Consultant at BISP Solutions. BISP Solutions is a tech company providing technological solutions across the globe. In this video, we'll be taking up vendor return authorizations into the Oracle NetSuite application. So we'll be taking up uh, what are vendor returns, then uh, what is the whole process flow of the vendor returns and how do we create vendor returns into the NetSuite application. So let's start. Vendor returns are basically transactions that show that what items are to be returned or shipped back to the vendor. So vendor returns are created when you have received your uh, products from the purchase order and the products so received are maybe not as per the requirements or specifications or due to certain other terms and conditions not being matched, you are returning the product to the vendor. Uh, in that case, a vendor return transaction or a record is created into the application or into the system. Uh, so the whole process flow of the vendor returns is uh, divided into four stages. The first one is you are going to enter the return authorization. Sorry, you're going to enter the return authorization. Uh, it records the, in, uh, now entering the return authorization records all the information about the return, such as the item number, description, quantity uh, that is being returned, the value of the return and the vendor RMA number. So these are the, uh, things that are usually recorded and uh, uh, specified into the uh, when you are entering the return authorization. The second is approving the authorization. Uh, approving the authorization is when you approve the authorization and approves the return of the items to the vendor. The third stage is shipping the return. Uh, shipping the return verifies that the items has have been shipped back to the vendor and they have been uh, taken out from your warehouse and shipped to the vendor at their uh, warehouses or where, whatever is the location for the uh, vendor. And then is the crediting the return. Crediting the return is you are logging a refund or a credit from the vendor for the items that you have shipped back to the vendor. So this is what uh, vendor returns are and this is the whole process flow of the vendor returns into the Oracle NetSuite application. So let's move to our NetSuite application and uh, let's create a vendor returns into the NetSuite application. So vendor returns in the application are can be created by two ways. One is you can create a vendor return from an existing PO which you have received, of course, until and unless you're not, you haven't received the PO, there is no vendor return that can be created, which is very obvious. So a PO on which uh, is either built or fully built or certain items have been received, a re item receipt has been created for a PO, for only uh, those POs, vendor returns can be created. And the second is you can manually enter a vendor return into the system without attaching a PO to it. So let's start with manually uh, creating a vendor returns into the system. So this open up the vendor return forms. Yeah, so this is the vendor return form. Over here, you can specify any reference number. Uh, it is already created, but if you have your own reference number, you can provide. Uh, selecting the uh, vendor, for which you would like to return to which you would like to return the items to so next is the status pending approval is if your organization's work on a uh, organization have a process workflow or a workflow process inculcated uh, then process a pending approval is the status for the returns that you're creating that is you are creating a return as from an employee and your supervisor is going to approve the return uh, but here I have logged in as an administrator. So I have the power to change the status to pending return. So that means now the next stage for this bill that is created is to return the product to the vendor. Amount will automatically be calculated. Any memo, uh, if you would like to add, I am just adding for our reference. Uh, subsidiary etc is automatically uh, being taken up from the when we have selected the vendor the rest is not compulsory uh, it is optional if you want you can uh, you can provide this information 
next is uh, you in the expenses tab you can attach the expenses that are attached to this particular uh, shipping that is a particular vendor return any expenses that have been incurred for this return and into the items you can specify the items that uh, item that you would like to return so this is the item that i would like to return there are around five item uh, five quantities and there is one more important thing that needs to be specified when you are providing when you are creating a vr that is a vendor return authorization is you will have to select the location from where it needs to be uh, you know shipped back so this is the uh, location that i have selected i have selected the item description etc rest all the information is not compulsory if you want you can select and provide the information for billing relationships communications taxation purposes etc and approvals like project manager approval or something so all that information uh, you can put in into the uh, bill i have add i have and now all the important information that i would like to include i have uh, provided that and i'm going to save this particular vendor return bill so as you can see this bill has been saved and the status that it is showing the flag it is showing is pending return had i been selected pending approval it would have shown pending and approval and my supervisor would have approved the pen, uh, the return and then the status would have changed to pending return and now since there is no approval uh, i am requiring for this particular bill that i have created i the flag that it is showing is pending returns now this is one way of creating a vendor return authorization there are another there is one another way of creating a vendor return authorization is creating a return from a po that you have received or that has been billed so moving on to the list of the pos so this is a po uh, for which the status is pending bill that means we have received the item now the only thing pending is bill for this po po 149 and as you can see this is the vendor return po this is the po that i had created for the purpose of vendor returns so this is a po on which items have been received and bill is pending uh, but i would like to return the products so i am going to click on authorize return the same uh, <coughs> form will open that is vendor return authorization form is going to open now in the manual return authorization form everything needs to be filled up but here uh, everything is populated automatically selected from the po because we have created it from a po and here the only thing i will change is the pending return rest everything is populated automatically except for the location and the yes sorry so except for the location and the status if uh, you are following the approval workflow the uh, workflow approvals then you can uh, leave the status you will have to select the location and save it so as you can see a vendor return authorization has been created from a po now as you can see this is created from po 149 that is purchase order 149 the last one that we had created manually there was no created from tag attached to it and uh, again the flag that it is showing is pending return now moving on to our <coughs> sorry return authorizations list this is where i can view all the return, vendor return uh, forms that has been created so one is we have just now created a manual vendor return authorization form and one is that we have created from a purchase order so the next step comes here is uh, let us take the purchase order one and uh, the next step is we'll have to ship the return that is ship the uh, items so as you can see this is the uh, item fulfillment uh, we are returning all the products and there is no partial return of the product any one or two like total of quantity is 3 and we are returning also all the quantity had it been only one quantity or two quantities are returned uh, this would have been a partial return but here we are returning all the quantities that were received into the po uh, everything has been populated only i need to save it 
so as you can see a uh, vendor return authorization uh, has been shipped that means uh, whatever uh, vra the vendor return that we had created we have shipped it back and now as you can see in this particular vendor return authorization which was created from a po and which we have shipped to the vendor back the options have changed now it is showing option of close and refund and so from when i click on re uh, refund the last stage will be we are going to create a vendor credit in the name of this vendor as you can see i have clicked on refund it is going to open the vendor credit form we are going to create a vendor credit in the name of this vendor for the amount 18000 dollars so this is the account in which it is going to show you can change the account also everything is automatically populated uh, if there are any bills pending for this vendor you could have applied it but since there are no uh, bills pending for this vendor where you could apply this vendor credit all you need to do is just save this and whenever a new bill is raised you can apply this vendor credit against that particular bill and now i'm going to save this particular bill credit so as you can see a bill credit has been created in the name of the vendor and whenever any bills will be raised again for this vendor this bill credit can be applied for against that bill so this is how uh, we can create vendor returns authorization into the uh, netsuite application so this is all from my side in case of any questions or queries you can of course get back to us at www.bisbsolutions.com thank you so much